Welcome to 10 Tips to Transform the Teaching of Reading. Today, we're going to look at ways to truly transform your teaching. Luckily for me, Emily Hanford's latest, At a Loss for Words, came out before this video, so I don't have to spend much time explaining the problems. Instead, you can read her report and listen to her podcast to understand. So, we get to focus on the positives of transforming reading, starting with sight words. The current teaching of sight words as wholes is not based on the science of how our brains actually learn to read. Instead, our brains process words as letters and letter teams in the area of the brain that processes sounds and oral language. It processes them, as Stanislaus de Haines says, in a massively parallel architecture. Your brain is processing them so fast and in parallel that you think you're reading them as a whole, when actually your brain is processing them as sounds. It's actually quite easy to teach them the way your brain learns best, by sound. My sight word split page lays out how, in my sight word by sound document, it shows you how to teach all but five of the most common 220 adult sight words and 100 fry instant words with phonics. I also have bookmarks to help. Ideally, you wouldn't teach the so-called sight words separately at all. Any good phonics program will teach them as they come along with a normal phonics sequence. For example, this chart by Don Potter shows the blend phonics unit in which each adult sight word is taught. Once the phonics basics are taught, the exceptions can be easily learned using my sight words by sound document as a guide. So, transform your teaching and teach sight words the way the brain words best, by sound, not by sight. As Ari explains, and as I found with my students, it can be harder to undo the habits if you're teaching with sight words first instead of phonics first. Most of my students have guessing problems, and the older they are and the longer they've been guessing, the harder it is to overcome these habits. They can be overcome with nonsense words, but it takes time. So, if you teach sight words with phonics, you'll be teaching your students phonics patterns while also preventing guessing habits. Now that you're not teaching sight words as wholes, what are you going to do to replace your word wall? Again, the answer is based on sounds. You can transform your teaching of reading by replacing your word wall with a sound wall. In my 25 years as a volunteer literacy tutor, I found that the more I focused on sounds, the better my students do. My chart shows sounds arranged in sound order and explains a lot about their arrangement. Don Potter has a chart in similar order. These charts have good ideas for consonants. For vowels, many teachers who make a sound wall use a vowel valley based on their position in the mouth. If you search vowel valley, you should get some good ideas. There are also some good articles about how to set up a sound wall in your classroom. You can also get some good ideas about sound walls from Logic of English, Tools for Reading, and The Reading Link. Uh, the Reading Link has an entire video devoted to sound wall. Tip number three. Moving from leveled readers to decodable readers. Leveled readers are very patterned and predictable, leading students to guess the words instead of learning to sound them out. Also, most leveled readers have words that the students have not yet learned to decode, further causing guessing habits. Decodable readers um, only should have sounds that the students have already been taught. A fun series and free to print is I See Sam. The characters are very cute and have cute little expressions, and they're not that predictable, so they're not too easy to guess. Don Potter also has some blend phonics readers that are not predictable and go along with the free-to-print blend, blend phonics program. And there's lots of others out there. Just make sure that they don't have a lot of sight words, or if they do, but it, you should still avoid them, but if, if you really like a reader that does have some sight words that haven't been taught, make sure you teach them phonetically first before they're allowed to read them in a book. Number four, moving from cueing habits to decoding habits. Cueing is not based on science. It was an unproven theory developed by people in the whole language system. And it has a bunch of other cues other than the sounds, training students to use other cues than the sounds training them to guess from pictures or the first letter of the word, a bunch of other cues, but not decoding. Most of my students who come out of schools who believe in the unproven, unscientific theory of three cueing have a lot of guessing habits. 
As Emily Hanford explains in At a Loss for Words, Goodman said that the three queuing theory is based on years of observational research. In his view, three queuing is perfectly valid, drawn from a different kind of evidence than what scientists collects, collect in their labs. Emily Hanford went and interviewed Goodman, and he said, my science is different. Number five thing to transform is guided reading, and instead going to guided teaching of phonics basics. There's two different kinds of guided reading. Uh, it can be just a term to have students in groups reading, which is fine. However, as explained by Founts and Pinnell, it's part of the whole three queuing system. And here is a quote from Lucy Calkins about guided reading that Stephen Parker recently shared on Twitter. Teaching an early reader to think about what the text might say by looking at the picture and then to look at the print to check that guess works well if the child's prediction, predictions are remotely accurate. I train my students not to guess, but to sound out. And you should too. It really improves their self-confidence and their ability to read anything. Number six is transforming how you teach reading comprehension. In many schools, they go over and over the supposed high-level skills of teaching reading comprehension. However, if you study what actually builds up good reading comprehension, it is being able to accurately read the words. Here shows a graph showing the correlation of accurate reading to reading comprehension. And also, other studies have found background knowledge. So, building up students' background knowledge and ability to read and vocabulary. And instead, you can teach comprehension in just a few short weeks. Those tips and strategies are important, but they shouldn't have to be repeated over and over and over, when instead you should spend time on what truly improves students' comprehension. Number seven, transforming from whole word level help to sound level help. When I've had teachers help out as volunteers, um, I've had to retrain some of their habits. They they want to have focus on meaning. Instead, you have to have them focus on sound. And one of the big areas that they do this is they'll just, if the student can't figure out a word, they'll just tell them a word. Instead, what you need to do to get them to learn is to help them figure out the sounds and then how to use the sound charts, uh, guiding them through what the sounds might be. For example, when they're looking at the word top, you might say, all right, do you know the first sound? And if they don't, then help them find it on the chart and then you'll tell them that the second sound is going to be short because it ends in a consonant and see if they know the short sound of O. If not, help them find it on the chart and finally the last sound and then helping them blend it together. And eventually you'll teach them to fish this way. They'll be able to use the charts to help them sound out anything on their own and then eventually they'll be reading anything on their own. Tip number eight, transform overemphasis on timing to an overemphasis on teaching. Now, you do want to occasionally time and assess your students, how accurate they are and how many words they're reading per minute. But I've had a lot of students complain that they were overly timed and timed and timed without being taught. In, in fact, I've had some students who won't even allow them to time me. If I want to figure out how many words per minute they're doing, I, I have to um, just record them reading and later time them. If you focus on developing good phonemic awareness and good quick knowledge of the sounds and the sound charts and blending, then the timing will come along by itself through good practice of learning the s over learning the sounds and how they work together and sounding out simple words. Speed will come with accurate practice. Number nine, this kind of ties everything together transforming your system of teaching from balanced literacy to structured literacy. And balanced literacy really isn't that balanced. It um, is setting up the children to do a little bit of everything and not have a firm ability of sounding out from left, left to right. In fact, every, almost every part of balanced literacy is driving them towards guessing. Instead, you want a good structured literacy program, which includes a good phonics program and 
a good phonemic awareness program if need be. There's a lot of different things for young students. Um, I like this book here. It has a lot of fun exercises. I've also seen samples of Hagerty and it looks good. And for older students, definitely the best thing I've seen out there is Kilpatrick's exercises and is equipped for reading success. Number 10, transforming from a word-based system to a sound-based system. And to truly be able to transform to the proven scientific way that the brain needs to learn by sound, you have to understand how phonetic English actually is. If, if you understand the whole system by looking at some charts, and uh, Debbie Heppelweifel has some free alphabetic code charts, here they are, that are even more extensive, if you truly understand how phonetic English is and how the whole system works, then it's easier to teach. In my syllables class, I show some two-letter vowel themes like this and some of their patterns and why. And to further understand the system, there's a few good books. The ABCs and All Their Tricks by Margaret Bishop. It's based on the most common 17,000 words of English, and it shows their patterns and percentages. And Uncovering the Logic of English. It's a slightly different way of arranging that helps explain how alphabetic English really is. And extra credit, syllables. Syllables are the true atoms of reading instruction. They're even more focused on sound than regular phonics. Noah Webster used to teach by syllables in his blue back speller. It was actually used to teach both reading and spelling. And I've used it with my remedial students. When I added it in, they started to get to much higher grade levels and also were just able to sound out anything and tackle any word with confidence. I've developed a program that adds in basic phonics to syllables. It's called Syllable Spell Success, and it's free to watch on my YouTube channel. If you watch through this, you'll truly understand how phonetic English is, how the whole system works together, and how you too can use the power of Webster and the power of syllables to improve your students' reading ability. Thanks for watching!